this video, I'm going to go ahead and work out four vector problems, um, starting from the purple to the green to the blue to the red that get increasingly more difficult. So if you would like to try these on your own first, go ahead and pause the video now. And now I'm going to start working through these, starting from the easiest one, which is the problem in purple right over here. And then we'll work our way to the slightly more difficult ones afterwards. So when you're working out these vector problems, it is definitely important that you make sure you draw a diagram of exactly what you're reading. So it says a man walks up the block, um, walks 20, 20 meters up the block and then turns right and goes another 12 meters. So it sounds like goes up 20 meters and then it turns to the right at 12. And anytime you connect vectors, you always use the tip to tail method, which means wherever one vector ends is where the next one starts. And then um, they're asking, what is his displacement? So the displacement is the distance from the very beginning of the first vector to the end of the last one. And then displacement would be something like a delta x. Now, all you have to do for this one is you just have to use Pythagorean theorem, which is just a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Um, and then go ahead and solve for your delta x from there. So after using the Pythagorean theorem, we took our two sides, squared them, summed them up, and then to get rid of these squared, we square rooted both sides. And then we got a final displacement of 23.32 meters, which is larger than either of the sides. So if you're finding the hypotenuse of a triangle, it would definitely make sense that it's larger than any of the two sides that create that right triangle. So that seems to make sense for our first one. For our second problem, we have a plane that flies 40 degrees north of west. So here are our cardinal directions, um, north and south and east and west. So when they say 40 degrees north of west, um, what that means is um, if we're going this way, this way is west, and then it's 40 degrees north of west, which means you're tilting up 40 degrees this way. Um, and it's moving at a speed of 300 miles per hour. How fast is the plane progressing to the north? So basically all you have to do is this. Um, you want to go ahead and close off your triangle and you want to figure out this component right over here. So if something is going north and west, it has some component that's taking it west and some component that's taking it north. So we'll call this one and for the um, northern vector. And we just want to find this little piece of the triangle right here. So we have this 40 degree angle and our red vector is opposite of it. And we have the hypotenuse side, which means that we're going to want to use sine. So the sine of 40 degrees equals the opposite end, which is our northern vector. So I'll just call that n divided by the hypotenuse, which is 300. And then what we can do is multiply both sides by 300 and then we are done. And 300 times sine of 40 equals 192.84 and that's in miles per hour. So that concludes our first two problems of a more basic vector problems. Let's go ahead and move to our second two now. Now we have two problems that are slightly more difficult. So we have a river that is 30 meters wide. So let's go ahead and draw this out. Um, here's our river. And it is 30 meters wide. A boat's crossing the river at a speed of four meters per second as a current of 2.5 meters per second flows to the west. How long does it take to cross the river and how far does the boat travel downstream? So there's a lot going on there. So let's go ahead and write this out as usual. So we have a current going to the west of two and a half meters per second. 
and then the actual speed of the boat is going at four meters per second. So that's kind of like our resultant velocity, kind of like our hypotenuse. So here is the four meters per second, the actual velocity of the boat. And then we have a portion of it that's unknown, this part right over here. So the component that takes it north or upwards across the river. So how long does it take to cross the river? That's going to be a important component because getting across it is basically moving like south to northern end to get across that 30 meters. So let's go ahead and solve that first. So we have three different parts of the triangle and we can use the Pythagorean theorem again, except this time we have our hypotenuse. So let's go ahead and plug those in and solve for this unknown component over here, which we'll call the northern vector. All right, so we plugged in our numbers. Um, we subtracted this two and a half square from both sides and then made sure we took the square root of both sides so we could just get regular n, our northern vector over here. And then we got 3.12 meters per second. Okay, so we're trying to figure out how long does it take to cross the river? Um, so you can use speed equals distance over time. Our speed is 3.12 meters per second equals the distance of 30 meters across that river over time. And what you can do is you can go ahead and cross multiply these two. So you're basically taking 30 divided by 3.12 and then your time comes out to 9.62 seconds. So that covers the first part of our problem. And now it says, how far does the boat travel downstream? Okay, so downstream meaning towards the west because the current is running towards the west. So now we're just going to use a new velocity and we're going to use the same formula, um, speed equals distance over time. Our new speed is two and a half meters per second. That's the one that's taking us downstream equals the distance we're looking for over the time. And we just got the time. The time is 9.62 seconds. Okay, so just like um, how we did some cross multiplying here, we're just going to cross multiply this one number up and over, which is basically multiplying both sides by 9.62. And then our distance comes out to 24.04 meters. All right, now for our final problem, uh, this one is going to be um, definitely the toughest one because we have a couple different angled vectors. We have a cyclist that's riding 45 degrees south of west. So they are going downwards, tilted south of directly west. Directly west is left of the page, and they're tilted down 45 degrees south of west. And then um, they're going 25, 24 miles per hour for three hours. Okay, so I'm going to hold off on which number I'm going to write down and then rides 25 degrees north of west. Okay, so tilt it up north, 25 degrees north of west. So again, west is to the left and it's tilting up north. So here's my 25 degree angle and that's 28 miles per hour for two hours. What is a cyclist total displacement? Okay, so displacement is how far. So what we can do is to find out how far, if they're going 24 miles per hour for three hours, you can go ahead and multiply 24 times three, and then that would give us 72 miles over here. And then we'll do 28 times two, and then that would give us 56 miles over here. Okay, so where is the cyclist total displacement? Okay, now this one is going to be a little bit more tricky because we're going to have to do a few different steps. So the first thing we have to do is we're going to have to find some different components. We're going to have to find the X component of this one, and then we're going to have to find the Y component of it. Same thing with the other one. This one is going to the West some, and then it's also going to the North a little bit. 
So what we can do is we can go ahead and use a little bit of trig to find the different sides of it. So if we're using the, or trying to find the red vectors, which are like the vertical ones, those are exactly opposite of the 25 and 45 degree angle. So those ones we want to use sine because sine is opposite over hypotenuse. And then for the green ones are horizontal vectors. Those ones are adjacent to our angles. So that one we're going to use cosine. Okay. So let's go ahead and set those up and then solve for those numbers. All right, so what I did is I just showed the work for this triangle and I didn't show the work for the second one, but the strategy is very, very similar. So we have the sine of 45 and then we have 72, which is our hypotenuse, multiply both sides by 72. And then we got the Y, our vertical component of 50.91. And then we did the same thing for the vertical component, except we used cosine. We still got 50.91 because 45 degrees is split right in between um, zero to 90 degrees. Okay, for the other one, we just use the sine and cosine of 25 degrees. And then instead of the hypotenuse of 72, we obviously use the 56. All right, now to get our final answer, um, here's what we have to do. We're going to take our two red vectors and we're going to subtract them because they're going in opposite directions. So we know the one that's moving downwards is greater than the one that's moving upwards. So if we take 50.91 and subtract 23.66, that gives us 27.25, and that is directed downwards. And then in the horizontal region, we're gonna add these two because both of them are going to the left, both of them are going west. So if we add 50.75 plus 50.91, then we get 101. 0.66 and then that's going to the left. So now what we're going to do as our final step is we are going to piece those together tip to tail. So we have a big horizontal vector of 101.66 meters and then at the end of that vector we're going to piece together this vertical one so it's going to go down 27.25 and then our answer is going to be the resultant right over here. Okay, so again, we're going to use the Pythagorean theorem, um, which is a squared plus b squared equals this c squared over here. So we could call this c, or again, we could call it just delta x for displacement. And um, what we would get for the total displacement is 105.25 meters, okay, which is basically just taking the square root of. 27.25 squared plus 101.66 squared um, in the end. So that is part of our final answer. And in addition, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add a direction to that as well. So we know that it's 105.25 from the very starting point, which is right over here. This is our start and then right over here, which is our end. So we know that's 105.25 meters, and it looks like it's almost straight, but I'm sure there's probably some angle there. Um, so let's go ahead and figure that out. So what we can do is use um, an inverse uh, trig function, such as the inverse of tangent, and here's the angle, so it's opposite. over adjacent for any kind of tangent function. Okay, so if I did opposite divided by adjacent, did inverse of that, then our unknown angle comes out to 15.0 degrees, and then that's going tilted downward, so tilted downward south of west, because it's 
tilted down from straight west. So I hope that was helpful in working out four different vector problems. Hope you got some good practice in and some strategies. So thank you very much for watching and listening.